Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Um, unfortunately, today we have some bad news. Um, my little boy here, Poe, my bamboo ultra male, male um, has a respiratory infection. Um, it might be sort of hard to see. Uh, let's see. But on the corner of his mouth there, he's, he has a little bit of bubbles, a little bit of foaming on his mouth. Um, and if you can see on this side, he sort of has substrate stuck to his face. Um, and, you know, foaming, uh, uh, like saliva, kind of foaming at the mouth, um, trouble breathing, wheezing, sneezing. Um, and you can usually tell that they have saliva on their mouth if you have substrate because it gets stuck to their face. Um, so I took him to the vet yesterday. I saw, yesterday was uh, Thursday. I s noticed it maybe about Tuesday, and that was the earliest they can get me into the vet. Um, and the vet, I uh, believe that it's a respiratory infection. They're pretty easy to, to tell. Um, so he thinks it's bacterial. Um, he gave him a shot, I think it's like ceftazetamine or something. Um, it's an antibiotic that you take a shot every three days. He was hoping that it goes away with one shot. Um, he said he normally would have had me go in with him um, because we're still kind of in COVID lockdown. I wasn't allowed in the building. Um, he said if it's not gone by next week, he's going to have me come in, show me how to do it myself um, so that I could do it in the future if it happens again. Um, but basically, it's just an injection. It's an intramuscular injection that you give the snake. Um, but I don't know if you can see as he's breathing. He's having a little trouble. I just saw kind of snot bubbles come out of his nose and he was opening up his mouth a little bit to breathe but basically um with respiratory infections in snakes they can either be bacterial fungal or viral viral is usually a very bad thing that you don't want in the collection you can't cure it and it can wreak havoc and destroy uh, your collection of reptiles um, bacterial is treatable um, especially if you catch it early on and he thinks, you know, because he's in such good shape, um, and because we caught it early enough, it really shouldn't be an issue. But because of this, um, he's obviously, uh, you know, not breeding right now because you don't want him around the other snakes. Um, and basically, you know, I'm gonna have to wait four or five days to see if it's cleared up. If it is cleared up, um, you know, I'm basically probably going to keep him away from other snakes for probably about another week or two just to make sure it's completely gone to see if I don't see any more symptoms. Um, as of right now, now what causes a upper respiratory infection? Um, that can be a number of things. Um, it can be because the humidity is too high and bacteria starts to grow in the tub or enclosure. Um, it could just be some sort of bacteria that unfortunately got, got into his system. Um, this is honestly in, in two and a half, three years of doing this and now with 40, 50 snakes, this is honestly the first time I've had this happen. Um, I knew what it was, to, what to look for because I had seen it in, um, you know, online and just doing research and stuff. And, um, you know, it kind of came as a surprise, but I guess you're, you're probably going to run into these issues as you... Um, you know, or keeping reptiles and amphibians, but they're definitely things that you want to get a hold of quickly so that you're not running into long term problems with your animals. Um, because this is, I mean, a bacterial infection, a respiratory infection, something that can kill your snake or lizard or whatever you have. Um, so it's something that you really need to get taken care of immediately. Um, you know, and the vet got him an a antibiotic injection. Um, and now, so what we're having to do with him is obviously keep, keep him away from the other snakes. Um, instead of substrate for the time being, um, I don't know if you can see his nose there. You can see, you see the, like the mucus coming out of there. Oh, you can just heard him breathe right there too. Um, kind of like a, like he was clearing his nose out like a, um, and you basically want to dry him out. Um, you know, the humidity in this room is 50%. Anyways, you can hear him a little bit. Um, but I took all the substrate out of his tub and he's just sitting on unprinted newspaper um, because I don't want any excess moisture in there. I want that all, his whole respiratory system to dry out. 
hopefully by doing that, um, you know, in three, four days, he's in better health and, you know, he's getting, he's on the mend and getting back to normal. Um, you know, it kind of stinks, but you know, it's bound to happen. And hopefully, um, you know, once the kind of COVID lockdown is done, hopefully one shot does it for him. If it doesn't, um, at least the doctor or the vet will, um, you know, have me back in there, you know, give me some extra injections and show me how to do it. Um, I can't imagine that's too difficult. And from what I read, um, I think like the, the common name, yeah, you can see right there, see the bubbles in the saliva. Um, I think the common name is Fortaz and you know, most people use either Fortaz or Baytril. Um, those are the two antibiotics for this. The positive that I've uh, read about using a Fortaz instead of Baytril is because it's once every three days instead of once every day. And because their metabolism is so slow, um, you're better off with the Fortaz because it's kind of more of a slow, slow release sort of thing. Um, trying to get some more shots of him, if you can see his mouth. You can see all the like, saliva bubbles there on the side of his face. They'll, basically, you'll see saliva, saliva bubbles on their mouth. Um, they'll open up their mouth to gasp for air every once in a while. And usually the first telltale sign you see is that they start getting substrates stuck all over their face and, and the corners of their mouth. There, see how he's breathing with his mouth open? Trying to get some air. So, um, you know, I, I have no idea what caused this. Um, you know, either he just caught something in the in one of the tubs he was in, um, or um, it was, it was just too humid for him at one point. Um, you know, it, it's funny that it happened with him because he's back and forth between, you know, three different tubs plus his own during a week. So he's never really in one place for too long. And I'm hoping, you know, nothing spreads to any of the females he was with. Um, here, see how he's breathing with his mouth open there. So hopefully I, you know, kind of got a hold of it early while I could. Um, and, you know, he fully recovers and, and, you know, nothing spread to any of the females that he was breeding with. Um, it's kind of a, on a side note, from a breeding perspective, it kind of stinks because he was doing really good and locking up with the females. Um, but obviously the number one concern is, you know, him getting healthy and, you know, not spreading the infection to any of the other females that he was paired up to. Let's see right there. So, um, again, you know, the things to look for are, you know, uh, trouble breathing, wheezing, uh, saliva on the side of their mouth, the kind of, uh, snot bubbles come out of their nose, substrate getting stuck on the side of their faces. Um, you want to catch it, catch it early, get them to the vet. Um, it's not a very expensive vet visit. I mean, the place I went to, and he's a snake specialist, it was like $40 for the visit and like $15 for the shot. Um, so like after tax, I was maybe out of there for 60 bucks. Um, that's better than having a, having a, uh, a really big, more bigger health concern on your hands. So, um, and then also kind of goes back to making sure that, you know, everything's clean and everything's the right humidity. If I had to guess, I would assume maybe the humidity was too high in one of the tubs he was in and and as I was talking to the vet yesterday, um, I was like, you know what? What I realized it may have been was that in his tub, in his own personal tub, um, I think I noticed maybe last week, like maybe seven days before this happened, that the front of his tub was like extra humid. Um, and I didn't think much about it because that usually happens when they dump over some water or spill some water or something. Um, and it hasn't been an issue before, so I didn't really think anything of it. But now that he has a respiratory infection, and uh, none of the other snakes do, I'm going to go on this side. You can see he has like a, a air bubble on the side of his face. Um, anyways, and now that he has an issue, none of the other ones do. I'm thinking maybe that was it. So now, what happens when it's extra humid um, is it promotes the growth of bacteria. So if there's like the smallest amount of bacteria in there, 
and it's super humid, it's really going to um, promote the growth of that bacteria. So, um, you know, make sure your humidity is right, make sure you're cleaning it, the, the tubs all the time. And if you do see any of those symptoms, make sure you're on top of it and get them to the vet ASAP to make sure that it doesn't, the respiratory infection doesn't turn anything super serious. So, um, you know, he's on the mend. Hopefully he just got his shot. It's been less than 24 hours. Um, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, through the weekend he's looking better. If not, I'll have to take him back next week, but I'll keep you guys updated on that as well. So, um, you know, that's respiratory infections. They stink, uh, you know, you don't want them, you know, obviously it's not good for the snake and, and can actually cause death too. So keep on top of the, the temperature and humidity in your tubs and on top of cleaning too, and you will not run into uh, an issue like this with your, with your pet snake. So that is it for today. Thanks for stopping by and please remember to like and subscribe. See ya.